All right, today we're going to talk about solving systems of equations using elimination, which, uh, spoiler alert, this is my favorite method just because uh, I tend to think it's the easiest one, but I hate substitution, I'm not going to lie. Graphing is okay, but solving systems with elimination seems to be the easiest way for my brain to do it. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Well, there's two ways, and then there's a couple modifications to that. Uh, the first is you want to look at the idea of just adding the numbers together. So we're just going to add like terms together. So we're going to call this elimination with adding. That's the flavor for this time. In this case, um, you do it generally when you see the same number in front of one of the letters. So there's a 5y and a negative 5y. As long as one's one sign and one's the other, then you could totally eliminate that term just by uh, adding them together because 5 minus 5 is 0. So when I do 5 minus 5 gives me 0, I'll have no y's left. So 0y, which means I can eliminate it. Uh, over here, I need to do negative 1 plus negative 7, which is negative 8x. And then I do negative 17 plus 1, which gives you negative 16. So I can easily solve this. Divide by negative 8. x is equal to 2. And now all I need to do to get my final answer, whatever it is it is, is to go back in and plug this x into one of these equations. And I'm just going to plug it into the first one. So I'm going to do negative 2 plus 5y equals negative 17. Draw my line. This gives me negative 2. To eliminate minus 2, I need to add 2. So this becomes negative 15. 5y divide by 5 on both sides, and you get y is equal to negative 3. All I did was eliminate using adding, plug it back into one of them. You could have plugged it back into this one, and you still would have got this. And your final answer is 2, negative 3. And that's how you need to form your answer for systems of equations in case you... You probably already knew that anyway, but just as an added uh, heads up, that's kind of where you want to go with it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is look at one where you don't add. You're going to do the opposite of that, which is, of course, subtract. In this case, the time that we want to subtract is the time in which we have the same number in front of one of the variables, like we have 6x or negative 6 in front of the x's, but you don't have a situation where they have different signs. So these have the same signs. So in order to get rid of them, we're just going to subtract. So this brand of elimination is subtraction. So I do negative 6 minus negative 6, which is the same as negative 6 plus 6, which eliminates the x terms completely. Then I do negative 7 minus 2, which gives you negative 9. If you're doing subtraction, you might want to put a big minus sign out here. Or you could uh, change all the signs and do adding either way. Um, and then you do 3 minus negative 24, and you get neg uh, positive 27. I'm sorry. You get positive 27 here. So when you do that, you want to, uh, this is y, I forgot about that part, divide by negative 9, your y value is negative 3. To find out what the x value is, of course, you just plug it back in. I'm going to plug it back into the second one. Make sure you plug it in for the right variable. Negative 24. Uh, so negative 6x minus 6 equals negative 24. To get rid of minus 6, I need to add 6. negative 18, negative 6x, divide by negative 6, and you get x is equal to 3, so your final answer is 3 and negative 3. Not really that difficult to pull that one off, but that's what you need to do if you end up with the uh, same answer for, um, with the same number but different signs. Now, what happens if it doesn't look like that? It looks a little different. As you can see in this problem, None of them are the same. None of the y values are the same or the x values are the same. But if you can look at them and see that one of them is a multiple of another, it's really easy. So in this case, 6 is uh, half of 12, or 2 times 6 is 12. So what I'm going to do is take the entire equation on the bottom and multiply it by 2. And because I tend to like to add, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. That way I can just mark things out in a nice orderly fashion. So instead of having uh, 6x plus 3y equals negative 12, I'm going to do 
negative 12x minus 6y plus 24 because I did uh, minus times minus. And you could have, of course, done it times 2 and then just be 12, uh, 6, and negative 24, but whatever. Then you put the original back on the bottom here. And since I have these opposite signs, I'm going to do this by adding. So I'm going to get rid of that. Negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. Why? Um, 24 minus 4 is just 20. Divide by negative 10. Y's value is negative 2. And once you get to that point, it's the same thing. So you just go back in and uh, plug it into one of the equations. 6X plus 3Y is negative 12, so my Y is negative 2. And you can plug it back into the original equation, too. You don't have to multiply it by negative 2 and plug it back in. Or you can plug it in up here. Either way. Minus 6 plus 6 negative 6 divided by 6 x is equal to negative 1. So I have negative 1 and negative 2 and that's my answer. So if you look at your equation for a minute or two and you see that oh well that kind of looks somewhat similar to what I was doing before but or it looked a little bit like it but if I just multiply this by 2 it'd give me this so you find a multiple you're in good shape that's a multiply one of the terms question. The most complicated type is the type where you don't have anything that works in a nice multiple form. So I can't do 5 times 2 giving me 6 or 6 times 2 giving me 8. This is one of the really weird ones that you have to multiply the top and the bottom. So this is multiplying two parts. It's not really that complicated. All you need to do is figure out what the common multiples are. And the easiest thing to do is just pick either x or y that you want to eliminate. I'm going to eliminate the y term here. I don't know why. I just feel like that's what I should be doing. And um, so I'm going to multiply this term by whatever's down here and this term by whatever's down here. And it might be helpful for me because I like adding so much to change the signs on one of them. I don't have to. I could keep the signs and subtract or whatever. But I'm going to change the signs on one of them. Anyway, uh, so instead of multiplying it by 6, I'm going to multiply this by negative 6. And then I'm going to multiply this one by positive 5 plus 5 caught myself in a hole there because I put a minus and I didn't mean to. So uh, I'm basically uh, going to eliminate the terms out in a second and I'll show you how that works. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. Negative 6 times negative 5 is plus 30. Y. Negative 6 times negative 14 is positive 84. Now on the bottom 5 times 8 is 40x. 5 times uh, negative 6 is negative 30y. And then I'll do 5 times negative 12, which is negative 60. One versus the other. And now the idea is I need to, I found out a way to eliminate these because now they're different signs, right? So I'm just adding them. Those cancel. 40 minus 36 is 4. 84 minus 60 is 24. So I just divide by 4 and x gives me a value of 6. To find my y value I need to go back into one of the original two so I'll just use the one that's closest to my hand here. I'll use 8x minus 6y. 8 times 6 minus 6y equals negative 12. That'd be 48. To get rid of mm, plus 48, I need to subtract to negative 60, negative 6y, divide by negative 6, and I get a final y value of 10. So that would mean that my point of intersection or my solution to systems of, uh, uh, systems of equations would be 6, comma, 10. Now there's one other one I'd like to talk about. All right, let's talk about one more special type. I actually did this explanation a second ago, but you might see some glitching in the video. The explanation I gave was insane and made no sense, and then I realized it was insane and made no sense. So I'm shooting it again. Anyway, there's a couple special cases that you might have. 
uh, when you do systems of equations and of course there are no solution and infinite many solutions sometimes that happens when you have elimination here's how you can tell in this case I know that 7 times 2 gives me 14 so I'm just gonna do 7 times 2 and everything else by 2 as well to try to use that elimination for my own benefit so I do 7 times 2 it gives me 14 x 7 times negative 10 gives you minus 20 y and then 2 times negative 6 gives you negative 12. In this case, these cancel and these cancel. So we eliminated the variable terms, essentially. When you do that, if you have this, if the uh, numbers here eliminate, you can have what's called infinitely many solutions. But 6 minus 12 doesn't eliminate. 6 minus 12 is just negative 6. If you are left with the number after the elimination, it means no solution. It means that the lines never touch anyway because there's no point of intersection. They're parallel, essentially. Um, if you have everything eliminate, so say this was 6 as well, and they eliminated out all the terms, it means you basically had the same line written two different ways, which means it's all solutions, so infinitely many solutions. So you end up with a situation where you eliminate the uh, x, eliminate the y, and you eliminate the constant terms, it's infinitely many solutions. If you eliminate x, y, and you still have a number left over, no solution because they don't uh, really touch anywhere. So, hope that was helpful and uh, good luck.